Hi, I'm Catherine and I'm the winner of the GP on the Move Eco Inhaler Script Writing Competition. Enjoy! So you watched the first video. Are you now that person in your practice that takes in a sexy reusable water bottle to work? Maybe you cycle in. Did you set up those recycling points? Have you suggested a 10 point green action plan that includes solar panels, wind turbines, electric cars and composting toilets? <laughs> Okay, maybe we've gone too far. What if there was a way that as prescribers, we could have a big impact on the environment? What if it starts with something that is already green, like our prescription pads? When most of us reach for a first line inhaler, we generally go for a meter dose inhaler, which is called an MDI. These deliver a mist of medication from a pressurized container using aerosol propellants called HFCs. Unfortunately, these are powerful greenhouse gases that are contributing to global warming. In England alone, we prescribe about 50 million inhalers per year, and 70% of those are MDIs. In fact, our addiction to MDIs is puffing out 3 to 4% of the entire NHS carbon footprint and 15% of the primary care carbon footprint. This is so significant that reducing the use of MDIs is a key part of the NHS net zero plan. So what's the alternative? Enter dry powder inhalers or DPIs. Like cheap wine, croissants and sunshine, these are more common in mainland Europe and have no propellant in them. Instead, use the power of your breath to inhale the powdered medication into your airways. Without propellants, DPIs have a carbon equivalent impact that is anywhere between 10 to 30 times less than that of MDIs. Plus, DPIs are often a viable alternative option for many of our patients and in the right situation can represent the treatment that is best for your patients and for the planet. So how do we change things? Don't worry, we've come up with the snappy three Ps. Your practice, your patients, and disposal. As a side note, this makes for a great CPD boosting audit or even a leadership project. So you're welcome. So firstly, what inhalers are your practice prescribing? You can run analyses of your prescribing via your electronic patient record system. But if you are in England, you have access to an amazing website with loads of information called openprescribing.net. This website gathers and processes prescribing data from across all of England and presents it in handy graphs that look amazing at practice meetings. Click on the openprescribing.net website and find your practice. Put in your practice name or the postcode. And this is the practice that I work at, the Gill Medical Practice. What you want to do at this point is just scroll down and show all. And these are the measures by topic. Click on greener NHS. And if you scroll down here, let's look at the environmental impact of inhalers. So what this graph shows you are the MDIs prescribed as a proportion of all the inhalers. And what you can see here is how your practice is doing versus the national median. And if you click on the hyperlink here, this is brilliant. So it's going to show you exactly what you're prescribing. So this will help really to target your efforts. But remember, the goal here is not to get to the national median, but to actually reduce your emissions by 50%. Now this website can be helpful in forming links with your local surgeries to tackle the problem together, or you could just use it to make yourself feel smug. Now think of how as a practice you're going to tackle this whole problem. And I'm going to give you a few ideas. Now firstly, why don't you call in those patients on the really nasty MDIs like Flutiform or Symbicort and try to switch them? Next, how about patients that are on multiple SABAs per year? Well, that indicates poor control. Why don't you invite them in and do a bit of an asthma review with them? Now finally, how about those that are on mixed MDIs and DPIs? Why don't we get them to use the same type of inhaler? So you have quite a lot of options here. Let's get to the second P. It's time to think about your patients. As a practice, you can decide right now to always initiate new patients on DPIs first line, if appropriate, but more on that in a minute. NICE have produced a patient decision aid for patients with asthma. It's informative, but wordy. So you might consider slimming that down into a short letter and questionnaire that you can send to your patients before their annual asthma review, which is also an excellent time to consider switching inhalers. A word of caution here to the eco prescriber. Ensure you get the right inhaler and the right regime for the right patient. Otherwise, they'll end up with exacerbations or hospital admissions, which are obviously poor outcomes. So there are a couple of things to consider when counseling patients about an inhaler switch. And needless to say, this should always happen with the patient's consent. 
First is technique. The patients actually need to be able to use the inhaler. And so DPIs need a short and deep inhalation over about two to three seconds. And sometimes that's too much for certain patients. MDIs, on the other hand, need a slow and steady inhale over about four to five seconds, but that's often combined with pressing the inhaler. So if that's too much for your patients, you could consider using a spacer. Once you know which type of inhaler suits your patient, stick to that type for all of the inhalers that they use. Yes, even if that means using an MDI, MDI plus minus a spacer. Second is regime. So a MART regime condenses multiple inhalers into one inhaler that acts as both the preventer and the reliever, the rescue medication. By using just one inhaler, this reduces waste. And happily, most of these regimes come in the form of a dry powder inhaler. There will, however, be situations where you just can't move your patients off their MDIs. And that's okay, but don't take off your eco-prescriber hero cape just yet. You still have plenty of superpowers left. So say your patient uses two puffs of 100 micrograms of their inhaler. So what you could do is actually increase the dose of that inhaler to 200 micrograms and advise your patient to only take one puff at a time, literally having the greenhouse gases released. Another trick is to change the MDI inhaler to a brand that delivers the same amount of medication, but with reduced amounts of greenhouse gases. Ventolin Evo inhaler are the most popular inhalers in the UK, but they can be switched to smaller volume MDIs like Salamol or AirSalb, which have less than half the greenhouse gases. So all is not lost with MDIs and there's still plenty that you can do with them. Finally, to the last P, disposal. MDIs don't have counters, so patients often get rid of them way too early because it's very difficult to tell when it's actually finished. A study in Scotland showed that on average, 48% of medicine was left in MDIs versus 27% in DPIs, which have counters. Every inhaler is recyclable, with the plastic and aluminium being reused and the gases sold into the refrigeration industry, which is pretty cool, isn't it? pharmacies previously collected inhalers for recycling under the GSK Complete the Cycle Scheme, but this finished in September of 2020. A recycling scheme is available via Tiva Scheme, but this is a paid-only service available to pharmacists and dispensing practices that have signed up to Tiva, so that might not be an option for you. The next best option though, is actually incineration. Whilst this sounds awful, the high temperatures burn off the gases, making them safe. And some incineration plants can actually recover the metal within the inhalers. Making sure that your patients take their used inhalers back into a pharmacy ensures that they are going to be at least incinerated and not go into landfill where they gradually release the remaining gases like a sad party balloon. To sum up, MDIs are really bad for the environment. And in the UK, we just prescribe way too many. As prescribers though, you have the power to change this. Work out your prescribing habits as a practice. Identify suitable patients for potential switches. Counsel them well, and then enlist the help of your friendly pharmacist to aid with disposal. So there you have it, Eco Prescriber. A plan to reduce emissions from your practice, and not even one composting toilet in sight.